my background is as a, a professor and a scholar and a historian and also as a former journalist. Um, and from those perspectives, we all know the power of mass media. Um, and I think that um, we'll hear more about that actually in the next panel as well. So I'm hoping that my comments will help us put some context into this. We're particularly looking at African American communities. We're particularly looking at Chicago South Side. And one of the key takeaways that I want you to have from this discussion is how intractable and resilient uh, certain images, myths, and perceptions about black people remain. We know from newspapers and magazines to television and film to the internet and also media like video games. We don't think about video games, for example, advertising, billboards, those billboards that get erected in communities are all powerful social, economic, and political forces. In particular, media analysts like myself are interested in what we call the process of racialization. In other words, how racial ideas and myths are conveyed. We know that images and symbols are stand-ins for ideas and beliefs. Right? You use a symbol, it could be graphics, those of you who are in um, uh, advertising or public relations and in business, you know that you select an image or a symbol to represent a bigger idea. And when they're used by the media, they can convey both empowering or disempowering messages. In particular, the media use shorthanded codes to signal race, gender, ethnicity, sexuality, for example, and these are compelling and they sell products as well as ideas. One of the things that we might ask about is why should we care? Uh, many consider the media frivolous or insignificant, yet the current political climate tells us that the media is profoundly influential in shaping public opinion and political behavior. These images and these representations, whether they're from the 1920s or the 1960s or in this current moment, they have influence. They influence where people will buy homes or get products. The story about the internet access and AT&T, that is produced, um, those anxieties are produced by very much the mass media. Um, how black people are treated in schools and universities or on the streets or in healthcare, this is very much affected by mass media. Um, and I think that there are reversals too um, that have to do with social is isolation and segregation. So I want to leave you with um, a couple of thoughts. One, black popular culture is very influential in this process. It is both can be complicit it can help to exacerbate the images, but at the same time, it's resisting, it's creating alternative images, and I'll let you all think about which you think is going on here. Whether uh, empire is sort of fueling um, the kinds of representations that we struggle against, or whether they're um, creating new images. They're, and I think empire, for example, is a very complicated example of you know, sort of showing black capitalism at work, um, showing black entrepreneurship at the same time that it kind of reifies violence um, and, and a, a variety of other um, problematics. But we can't also leave out the role of black popular culture and black media in this whole process. So today's prevailing images, um, when I was doing, I just did a survey of media um, in preparation for this, and we all know this is what all of you, community developers, public planners, um, community um, advocates, um, bankers, and so forth, this is what you're up against. I want to leave you with some thoughts for how to move forward rather than only the negative images. One, I would argue revitalize, update, modernize African American media. These have been historic and influential voices of black communities and they continue to play an influential role. We are, they're proliferating on social media, but sometimes in isolation. And I would argue that a blog or a tweet cannot substitute for a great magazine article or compelling photography or original film and television. Black media need to be resourced, to be capitalized if they're to play a role in empowering black communities. Another direction 
is to push is the push to have di the diversity of black experiences and voices included in mainstream venues, not merely as a public relations move, but as a central part of our national discourse. We must counter the negative representations of Chicago's black communities with other stories, other messages, like some of the ones that we see here. And the city's black residents are the best ones to do it, the folks who are right here in Chicago. Youth media projects, funding for filmmakers and photographers, online and print media that comes from within the community rather than from outside can make a powerful difference. And getting young people to see the possibility of their lives and to see alternative representations of themselves can only help to resolve the troubling um, representations that still circulate widely in mass media. Thanks so much for inviting me. Um, I was, I'm delighted to hear more about this.